this is just the start just the start of what I have to load up and I have a whole bunch of stuff in the shed and the bar room that all needs to be loaded up in the truck I still got to go get the truck and I got to go get the tables what's going on guys it is Friday and I'm trying to get everything ready for a big garage sale the place I used to work Brickyard Antiques is having a nice big yard sale it's the night before so I've been pricing and listing everything that's like a quarter of what I have I still got to go pick up my old man's truck uh, then I gotta head to the storage. I gotta grab more things. I got a lawnmower to bring. I don't know what else. A whole bunch. Just trying to clear it out. 90% of the stuff that doesn't sell, it's going. It's just going to the donation bins. It's getting cleared out of the house because some of this stuff is just in the way of rentals, and that's no good regardless of what it's worth. Most of it's not worth very much. There's a few pieces I'll bring back. Some video games I'll bring back and stuff. But other than that, big purge, big clear out. So. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna have to get up early for it, but it's gonna be a lot of work tonight. And I have been so busy, I ended up with, I don't know. I don't know how many comics. Well over a hundred probably, or close to a hundred, I think. Um, and I paid 45 bucks for all of them. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown of those. A couple good ones. Most of them, honestly, are like two to five dollar comics, a couple eight dollar comics. They're really good filler for my booth. Uh, and then there's a couple good 15 to 20 dollar ones in there. So I'll, I'll quickly show you uh, that as well. I got comics and mirrors I still haven't hung up. Sorry, Casey. I'll hang them up eventually. <laughs> so I kind of got them laid out a little odd here because uh, I've looked some up. And then there's things that were in comics like these that were included. Uh, but, yeah. you know, so, some neat ones. I could fetch about 10 bucks for that. It's Undertaker comics. It's a lot of five of them. So that's pretty cool. Still sealed. Captain Adam. Um, I'm going to try and show you some of the more valuable ones. I'll try. That was about a $12 comic, I believe. And then, you know, you got some Punisher ones. That's a couple bucks old action comics but it's a reprint of the original action comics a couple bucks there actually that one i guess because sex sells is um don't quote me on these because i'm going off the top of my head now but i think that was around a 12 to 14 dollar comic a couple dollars another like five dollar comic i have to look this one up still it's sealed it's the valiant era collection usually these big thick collection ones uh, can do all right i can at least get five ten in the booths for them. There's another one, Shadow Man. Haven't looked any of those up. Path of the Planeswalker. That's a Magic the Gathering, like graphic novel, comic. That's an interesting one. Haven't looked that one up. Um, a lot of these I'll do in runs. Like this is missing one out of the set of four. It's like a mini series of four. So I'll do that as a run, get about 15 for that. So I mean, just, just in that pile, I'll make my money back. But listing comics is, it's quick and it's easy. But it feels like work because it's very just the same thing, rinse, repeat, just do it over and over. Came with some books. Um, I'll get a couple bucks a piece for these in the antique mall. My my booth's kind of like more retro-y, 90s themed. Actually, this one I already put on eBay because it goes for about $15. It's a little Sonic the Hedgehog 2 book. So that's listed. Uh, I've already had a couple offers. I got an $8 offer on it too. I might take Pokemon book, Junior Pokemon book. Again, it'll be a buck or two at the antique mall. That's just nice filler when the kids come through. This was included in the comics. These are something to watch out for. Uh, figures or books. Warhammer stuff. It'll say Games Workshop, Citadel, Warhammer, Warhammer 40K, um, Codexy, Games Workshop, Warhammer 40K. These are nice to look out for. Look up the books. Some are worth more than others. Uh, this one right here is about an $18 book. And this one's a $6 or $7 book. Uh, um, they will probably go on eBay just because these sell pretty quick on eBay. and They're easy to list. I just scan them. So I'm going to keep some of these separated. Uh, there we go. So what I'll likely do too, like I'll list that as a lot on eBay. And then a lot of these ones, I think I'm just going to bring a lot of them to the garage sale. And just like blanket price them at a couple bucks a piece because there's some image comics. The Reaper. Reaver? I don't know. Monkey Man. Another Reaver one. X-Men Alpha Flight. Uh, the Atom. These are ones I looked up. I think that was a good one we're selling. Secret Defenders. So there's some okay ones. Stephen King's The Stand. That was like an $8, $8 book. For whatever reason, at my antique mall, every time I bring in war comic books, I can get like four fifty to six bucks. Um, I think that was a little more pricey too. I believe these Law and Order ones, probably same thing, sex sells. Um, we're I want to say around eight dollars. You guys can look them up if you're honestly curious. Another Law and Order one, Sea Devils, Airboy. So, so that one, depending on con condition, there Moon Knight number one was going between fifteen to twenty five dollars with comps. So. Um, I got a lot of comic buyers at the antique mall. I don't know. That one I'll maybe list. I'll keep that one separate from the yard sale though. The rest of these I'll probably just blanket price them. Um, 
Like I could even sell them for a buck a piece and I'd still more than make my money back, but I'll, I'll probably put like two a piece, three for five kind of deal. And uh, see if I move them that way and then whatever's left over, I'll try to do little runs and lots on eBay, maybe list a couple singles when I'm bored and don't have a lot going on. Yeah, that's all the comics. So now back to uh, getting ready for the garage sale. So, my garage sale was a fail. It cost me money in the end. So that wasn't great, plus a lot of my time. I got a little bit of garage sale footage, and uh, yeah, it, it ended up not being great. Long story short, I didn't film a lot of it because it was just a frustrating day and I had to get it done. Borrowed my old man's truck because I sold my recent Ford um, that I had. We have an SUV still, uh, so I used two vehicles to bring a whole bunch of stuff down. Had a good garage sale. Uh, made like $300 at the start and then when I went to leave, not a great garage sale really, I guess 300 bucks is okay, um, but there's still cost of fuel and everything like that in time. So I did decent and then when I went to leave, I put my foot on the brake of the truck and it just right to the floor and brake fluid spit out everywhere. And my wife had already left with the SUV so I had to call someone to get a ride, I had to get a ride all the way back to my place, leave the truck overnight with all the stuff in it. And then the next morning head back and the next morning we had rain. We had so much rain. It rained all day. It was a rain warning, lightning warning. So a lot of stuff got wet. I beat the rain by a little bit. I was able to load a bunch in. What I ended up doing was donating tons of it and then loading up the things I wanted to keep back in the SUV and then having the truck towed at $180. So on my $300 garage, so you can already take $180 away from that. Uh, it's not leaving me very much. It leaves me $120 left profit, $60 bucks in fuel. So then we're left with $60. I bought lunch for myself and my wife and some stuff for Evan. Put me down to like $30. So I would call that a loss, even though I guess you could say I made about $30, but I, I'd still call it a loss because all the time, right? A day and a half out, not great. But things happen. It kind of sucked. Um, the only nice part, silver lining, one, the truck didn't blow a brake line while I was driving. It did it in a parking lot where I stopped. So absolute best case scenario to have a brake line blow like that. And number two, the silver lining, 90% of that garage sale stuff was stuff I just wanted out of the house, out of the storage. I just needed it cleaned. So uh, that's gone. So those parts are good. Other than that, kind of sucked. But shit happens, right? Uh, on a good note, I had some decent weekend sales over eBay and uh, two Etsy sales. It's, it's nothing crazy. It wasn't as good of a weekend as last weekend. Last weekend was way, way better, um, but I didn't list as much this weekend because I was more concerned about the garage sale, which ultimately did not end well. So that kind of happened. But yeah, you know, whatever. I guess it makes for good content. And uh, it was 20 bucks for the spot. A whole bunch of people came out. So that was good. It was nice to see that. It upped my booth sales too, because a lot of people shop through the antique mall when they're shopping at the garage sale. So that helped. I mean, there was good things about it. Just the time wasted in a broken truck always sucks. Felt bad for my old man. It's his truck I borrowed. And of course, whenever you borrow something, it breaks on you, right? Never fails. Or if I lend something out, they break it. 
But anyways, we'll go to a happier note. I'll show you some sales I had this weekend. You can see some eBay sales, some Etsy sales. I'll pack them up. And then I won an auction lot too, which I forgot about. And I had to go Sunday, even though it was Saturday pickup because the whole truck thing threw me for a loop. They called me and were like, are you coming for your auction stuff? I've been there lots before. Oh my gosh, yeah. And I got some pretty cool things out of there. Okay, so first sale is Sims Apartment Life 2. And it was $8 plus five shipping. So that's likely going to the States. The next thing that sold is a Xbox 360 iCamera, camera and it sold for $10 plus shipping. So a total of 22, I think, after shipping. Uh, and then one guy bought a whole bunch of stuff and he he always does, which I love. Every like month or so, he just buys a whole bunch of things off me. Um, but we'll do his stuff last. The other thing that sold, got it in my pocket to carry it downstairs, is a GameCube WaveBird receiver. It sold for $8 plus shipping. None of these are really big sales, but any sale is better than no sales. Next is this Platinum, Pokemon Platinum book guide thing. It sold for $10 plus shipping. And next we have Avengers Academy. It sold for $5 plus shipping. It'll likely go letter mail for about three bucks. And then the next thing we had sell is a Xbox, original Xbox game, Ride or Die. It was a whopping $3 sale plus shipping. The next thing that sold, I believe I had in the last video, it's this Sonic 2, vintage Sonic 2 book. It sold for eight plus shipping. We had another comic sale. Oh wait, no, that's for the lot. Here's the other comic. Look at them all over the place here. Danger Girl, it sold for six dollars plus shipping that's from that huge comic lot i picked up that i was listing uh those sold basically same day which was nice next thing that sold was mortal kombat 3 for the sega genesis it sold for 20 dollars plus shipping i took a best offer on that one and then we got a lego star wars set it sold for 23 dollars and 96 So there's the big crap pile of auction winnings. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna dig through all this. I'll just show you guys some of the highlights. I have a few of them pulled out on the table and then uh, I have the uh, bikes that I want outside. So I'm eating a Pop-Tart here. I'm hungry while making a video. I should probably eat first before filming. Actually, this bin is all auction winnings as well, but I have priced these. Oh, the camera work. 
and they're going to the antique mall. There's nothing too crazy here. Um, these are kind of cool. The old Sunoco Sunfleet motor oil tins. I think I got 10, yeah, I got 10 bucks on them. I won them both for like two bucks. Uh, there's that one, and there's this one. It's got a little dent, so I think I did it a little cheaper. Yeah, I did it at eight. These always do good at the antique mall I'm at, like enamel coated stuff, especially the campware. So there's that the sugar bowl to go with it. Some vintage old lamps, little salt and pepper shakers, and then underneath here is just little bits of glassware and stuff. Nothing crazy. A couple comics, a few neat figures in there. Um, again, nothing crazy. Most of it's just sort of filler. The cans will sell quick. They always do. So we'll add enamel pot. And there goes a loud truck. And this is the unique stuff that I wanted to show you guys that probably not everyone will know what this stuff is unless you're a mechanic or have worked in a machine shop before. So the first ones are, I think they got an actual model name, yeah, they're the actual helicoil. Uh, these are 5 16th size one, helicoil. And what a helicoil is, is basically a threaded thing. The only time I've actually ever used a helicoil in something like this is old... Um, oil drain plugs underneath the car when the threads strip on them we'll use that and a new coil will thread into it and that's how you put the bolt back in um, so those things actually should bring about 30 a piece and then these are interesting i'm having a hard time figuring out what i'm going to list them for i'm probably going to list them as a set but they look like i don't want to touch them with my bare hands because you're not really supposed to but they look like thermometers but they're meant to measure gases this one's for carbon dioxide that one's to measure ozone and I believe this one's nitrogen dioxide. Yeah, nitrogen dioxide. So, yeah, they're like little thermometers. They came with the book, dragger, how to use them, how they all function. Um, I'll likely, some of them are missing a couple, but I'll likely do this whole set. Ooh, don't want to lose one. Don't need them to break. Yeah, they're all packed in there. Nice. I'll likely do this whole set for about... I don't know, 50 to $75. I have to do more research on that though. They're interesting. And then the things that are really cool, I even love how these are packaged. German people know how to do things. Um, are these, I'm going to have to set the camera down to open these up. So these are very large taps, just like a tap and die set, but these would be for like a CNC machine. Uh, the make on these, some of them are Taylor. The other ones are a name that I likely won't be able to pronounce. That right there, they're German made. Um, that's just like a standard tap. I believe this one is a fluted tap. Anyways, between all four of these should bring me about $100, $130, if not a tad bit more. So that covers everything I spent at the auction. Uh, and then I have two bikes outside, one of which is pretty beat up and won't bring much, but I only paid like five bucks for it. And it is an older uh, CCM. And then the other is a cool older radio flyer tricycle that will likely go in the antique mall. And then that big pile of stuff is mostly filler. The only thing that was any good was the phones. I'll quickly show you that. So a lot of this stuff's like filler, like, you know, cheap saws and stuff, which whatever. I mean, I, you know, that's a quick 20 bucks for a nice chop saw like that or whatever you want to call it, a hand saw. Uh, these Polycom phones, they're super dusty, but they have Ethernet and computer hookup. And I believe these have VoIP, which is like voice over IP, so you can use your phone over the internet instead of having a phone plan. Uh, I think there was seven of these in here, and lots of five to eight when I was looking them up. Went for around 50 to 65, 70 bucks. So I'll probably just lot all those up. Oh, I got a rotary dial phone. I don't know why. Every time I get a rotary dial phone that's like kind of that color of black, it's a quick $25. Uh, I had a red one once at the antique mall, and I've seen some other color ones, yellow ones and stuff, sell all the way up to like 50, 60 bucks. It's weird. I don't know why. I don't know if they sell online. I've never looked them up online. I just know they do good at my antique mall. Somebody's making a lot of banging noise out here, but this is the radio... Literally, I can't talk. This is the radio flyer tricycle. So, it should be more this creamy white. Someone painted this fender. Oh, here comes big trucks. It never fails. Anytime I film something outside, big trucks go by. Uh, yeah, nice original radio flyer. I don't know. This is likely a reproduction of an older one. I don't know the exact year, but it does have the metal seat. It does have the metal spokes and new ones are usually all plastic, but it does have a warning sticker on the back. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of research, but anyways, regardless, what I paid for it is not that much. 
So I'll likely be able to at least double my money. I think I paid like $11 for this. So even if I got $30, $40, it's pretty neat. There's the handle. Neat little radio flyer. And then the other one's just an old beat up CCM. I'll bring it up on the deck too. Sorry guys, it's a little windy out here, but this is the vintage CCM. And I wasn't kidding when I said it's beat up. There's a lot of paint coming off of it. The wheels are flat, stuff like that. But for five bucks, I thought it looked cool. Heck, someone will use it as garden art. Um, I'll likely put that in the antique mall, try to get like $20, $25 for it. Or maybe I'll get bored and just restore it because I like having projects on hand. Well, that's about it for this video because honestly, I gotta get to work. I gotta get lifting this stuff. I can't leave a giant pile like this in my living room. It drives me nuts and it's gonna drive my wife nuts if I don't take care of it. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching guys. If you're not already, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.